morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Nancy Ennis, and I'd like to welcome all of you to Unity of Charlotte on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. It's so good to be here together. And I welcome you into our time of quiet contemplation, a time to listen and to experience the holy presence that's in this place. So let us begin our time together with our statement of faith. And let's feel the statement of faith of this one presence and power within us as we say it together. There is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. And our theme is I am centered in the peace of my soul. In times of change, I turn within to find peace. Centered in the peace and tranquility of God, I accomplish my tasks in self-assurance and joy. If I need to make a decision, I do not act impulsively or hastily. Instead, I patiently wait upon the guidance of God within. My intuitive eyes are watching and my inner ears are listening. I'll repeat that. My intuitive eyes are watching and my inner ears are listening. When clarity comes, I am ready to act. If I am not ready to do anything, I respect this as well. I bring the energy of equanimity calm and composure to every situation. The love of God is my stabilizing force. I manage change with serenity and poise. Connected to my deepest place of stillness, I am anchored in peace and love. And today's Bible verse comes from Psalm 108.1. My heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. My name is Elsie Bernard. I'll be your prayer chaplain today. Please stop by if you would like prayer of joy or celebration of sharing. Namaste. Feeling the words of the prayer Jesus gave his disciples when they asked how they should pray the words we sang, feeling those words vibrating within us. Let's go to our heart now together, each to their own heart, and breathe in and out through that heart space for a few moments. And feel the love that is God in our heart. Feel that as a presence alive within us that we can share with the world in our time of prayer. So let that radiate out, that love radiate out from your heart and fill your very being Feeling you from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Into your arms and hands. And sending that love out into this room. Sometimes it's like a wave in the ocean. Sometimes it's sent like a laser light. But love always knows where it's needed and goes where it is sent. So in our time of prayer, let us remember those who are in the weather conditions, the tornadoes, the floods. Let us remember those people that are affected. Send our love to them for healing. Send our love to those who are helping those people. And let our prayers of love join with all prayers that are being spoken at this time. And send it to the places of earthquake. And let it gather our awareness that we are here to work for a planet Earth. 
that supports everybody in harmony. Let's send that love wherever we would like it to go. If there's anyone in your heart today that you'd like to send love to, do it now. And if there's anyone you need to forgive, send them love too. Let's send our love into the elections that are taking shape around our country. As we elect our officials to lead our country, let us send love to all those people we've elected and will be elected. So they may listen to the wisdom of God and do what's best for our world. So feeling this room now, centered with the power of God's love, surrounding us and filling us, let us direct it to the prayer box, to all names that will be placed in our prayer box today, and extend it to Silent Unity Prayer Room, where the prayers are being prayed for in this moment. Just feel the love gathering as a mighty power coming on to planet of Earth because of our time in prayer today. So we thank you, God, for all of our blessings. It's time to come together and experience your presence. Become one with you. To know you. To serve you. And to become as your agent of life on this earth. And so it is. Amen. Spirit prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. Letting the chair support our body. Feeling that presence of God in our open heart. Taking a deep breath with the breath of life. And feel that gratitude in our heart. It's the gratitude that we said we will be a living sanctuary. So let us experience that sanctuary in this time of meditation. As we become quiet and still, let us fill that Holy Spirit within us. And remember the words of Jesus when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Everything else will be added unto you putting all of our attention on that kingdom within. The kingdom that is deep in our heart. Feeling it. Knowing it. Experiencing it in this present moment. Knowing the wholeness of ourself. 
feeling that oneness within ourselves and seeing it in every other person always there we're becoming more aware as we ask to be made a sanctuary for the Spirit of God. So we thank you, God, for filling our heart with love and with gratitude. And for a few moments in the silence, we experience that sanctuary inside of ourselves, the place you are calling us to live from, to be an expression of all you are in this world. Experiencing that sanctuary, settling into it, becoming one with it for a few moments in the silence. In the silence. So we thank you, God, for this time to experience your holy presence within us. May we treat ourselves as a temple, a temple of the living spirit you are, a temple for the sanctuary. And may we go forth to be your vessel and your vehicle of your love on this earth. Thank you for all of our blessings. We thank you for your ever-abiding presence in the way you are helping each of us grow and learn and become all we can be as your expression in this world. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence with your power live inside of me you're the living water never dying fountain hope the counselor take complete control welcome Holy Spirit we are in your presence with your power live inside of me fill us with your power live inside of me you got a light you got a light and it's shining out for everyone to see you got a light you got a light, and it's shining out for everyone to see. Now I feel that light in me. You got a love, you got a love, and it's shining out for everyone to see. You got a love, you got a love. Shining out for everyone to see. Now I feel the love in me. You've got a joy running through you now that just can't be denied. You've got a spirit like a firecracker lighting up the sky. You've got a power. You've got a power. Shining out for everyone to see. You got a bow, you got a bow, and it's shining out for everyone to see. Now I feel that bow in me.
saints. You got love. You got love. And it's shining out for everyone to see. Now I feel the love in me. Now I feel the love in me. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome all of you this morning to our celebration part of our service this morning and we want to honor anyone if, if you, it is your first time to be with us this morning would you just uh, let us recognize you ah. welcome I want to welcome you this morning we also want to welcome to you that are joining us through television and those who will view us on YouTube at some point I could minister on just that. 
A crystal blue vibration? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Vibrations enough, but blue, which is your throat chakra, persuasion. It is the voice of the true self emanating and extending itself into the world to tell us and explain to us this wonderful thing called creation. This wonderful thing that is the love of God manifest as you. So good morning to everyone. We're glad to have you. Today's message was to be last Sunday, but we just had a sweep of the spirit. Just come in here last Sunday and actually begin Wednesday morning in my class. And I said, whoa, something's going on here. Spirit is getting ready to come in in a way we've never known. So get ready and unfasten your seatbelts. <laughs> That's right. So uh, I hope that you welcome that. that we are truly a spirit-led, heart-driven community. And we do have a mission. And that mission is to be a guiding light. Set on a hill, literally. <laughs> When it says that you shall be as a city set on a hill, that's exactly where this community landed on this hill. So spiritually and naturally. Well, I'm sure the name puzzled uh, you. Uh, I think I heard from uh, Doug about what in the world to sing that would have to do with this title, and I know what to tell him. Uh, but I think he did real good. I want to thank this uh, team, and I want to thank Greg Again, we do not take them for granted, the wonderful talent and music that they offer here at Unity of Charlotte. We thank you. We know when we are blessed. I did not originate this title, actually. It is a, a title uh, that I got from a quote. Uh, in, re in doing the classes the last few weeks, we've been taking a lot of our classes from a book called Spiritual Anatomy, which was written by Dr. Carolyn Mace. And I'm sure most of you know that name or have heard of that name through the years. She's probably one of the world's greatest medical intuitives uh, that there is. And uh, her uh, teachings and her books have made a big impact on all of us in the late 80s and 90s, and certainly did me. So. Uh, in doing the class, I came uh, on this title that she has used, and I just thought it was such a great title, and I hope that you will leave here today understanding more about what this title will mean to you and how you can bring it to a living uh, part of your life and how that we can enter into this wonderful process of God, the divine, becoming in us. You know, God is... We say that. God is. Because God is. What? I am. I am. And what? All is well. That's a powerful statement to me. When I first heard it, I took it everywhere I went. Any groups that I went to at that time across the country, and I was traveling every weekend, I had people to share that little bit of information that I had picked up in unity. And I think it's so important. God is. But that which is wants to become. And that is where you and I come in. We are the becoming of that which is. We are the process of God becoming. So we cannot sit on the sideline. We have to realize that we have to be a part of this process. That we have to enter in. Today's message truly is for those who are ready to move from, as the Bible says, the sincere milk of the word into the meat of the word. The Bible speaks that there's actually three different levels of spirituality. There are those who are babes in Christ, and there are those that are children of God. But there are those who said, I put away my childish things and became an adult. And that is what we need to do right now. If the time ever needed, co-created spiritual adults taking responsibility to enter to the process of co-creating the destiny of this planet, it is now. And we should be one of the first ones to step, step up for this. You that have been prepared through the teachings of the principles of unity and new thought itself, 
and metaphysics become the initiates. You become the first of the harvest to rise to this occasion. And I want to say to you, I'm not here because I was just looking for a church. I'm not here because I was just looking for a bunch of people who wanted to come together and just feel good. But I was looking for a community of purpose. Nancy uses the word mission a lot now, and I think that's a powerful new word that we need to look at, that we are people, individually and collectively, with a mission. And I think we need to talk about that a little bit more, about what that mission is, because missions are the goals, the intentions that gives us direction in our life. So let's talk a little bit about biography becomes your biology. I do believe in all of the work being done today in the field of medicine and healing, there's one basic concept that is often dismissed and is irrelevant. That is the relationship of the mind and the body and the possibility that this relationship might have an effect on either our state of health or our ability to heal. We need to understand this relationship of the mind and the body. Again, I want to quote Charles Fillmore. I quoted this a couple of weeks ago, but I want you to know that talking about energy is some not a new, new thing. It's not new age. It's not just new physics. But there are those that uh, understood energy that are based upon the principles of unity. So even over a hundred years ago, Charles Fillmore says, God substance may be conceived as God energy. So he understood energy. And of course, at the same time he was doing that, you had Einstein, and you had Max Planck, and you had David Bohm, probably names you do not recognize, but these are the great fathers of moving us into an age of energy, of understanding that everything is about energy. Now, energy and spirit intertwine with each other because energy is the carrier of our spirit. That's why we come in here and try to get energized. The more that we are energized through the music, through the speaking, through all of the things that go on, the more spirit is moved and toward a direction in which it needs to be moved toward. So he says that God is energy or spirit or light. He understood this importance that all creation is based upon the principles and the elements of energy and light. And I'd like to add sound. You can't have energy vibrating without it making a sound. Now the Vedas tells us in the East that in the beginning was the sound. The Christian text tells us in the beginning was the word. But you have to have a thought before you have a word. If you look up the word word, it means an expressed thought. If you can't think it, you can't say it. Unless it's being channeled through you, which oftentimes happens to me. And I'm sitting over here thinking, oh, what is coming out of my mouth? <laughs> But most likely, something is working in your head that that thought is being expressed as the words that you speak. And of course, it goes on to tell us then at that point, if you speak words which are expressed thoughts with great conviction and faith and intent, they become flesh. They become biology. So let me define biography in this way, simply. Biography is the environment you create. Biography is the location in which you are, both inwardly and outwardly. We're all affected by the culture that is here in Charlotte, in North Carolina, in the South. We're all affected every day by the culture. Inwardly, we also have culture. We also have an atmosphere where we hang out in, we're influenced every day by how the direction of our moods, our attitudes, the kind of thoughts that we use are all creating an inner environment just as the outer environment affects us. Biology is the result. So let me say this again. By uh, the... the uh, 
I lost it just a minute. The biography is the environment, the biology is the result. Why I made that hard, I don't know. How many get that so far? All right. So, for as much as our bodies manifest our conscious thoughts and feelings, so too they manifest our unconscious energies which underlie every action. To understand the body-mind connection, we have to understand they are one. Now this has been a challenge for me, and I'd like to share with you at least my experience. This is my experience. But being very affected in the late 80s by A Course in Miracles, of course, who says to us, we are not our bodies. I didn't quite understand that, but I, I felt like in some way I am my body. So it was a kind of an inner conflict in me for a long time until I came into energy work. And of course, I begin to base my energy work based a little differently than I based my spiritual work, just a little differently, two different premises. The energy work was that everything is energy. So that means how can I exclude anything if it reduces down to the one component of energy? But then from a spiritual point of view, I understood the spirit was that which was becoming. It is the becoming part of us. And Adam became a living soul. So there's something that exists that became. And what it became was not exactly at the same level as what created it. Do you understand that? This is why we have bodies that in most cases are a little inferior to what's been created. So that which is created is perfect. Right? That which is created is an extension of the creator itself which is perfect. If you believe your creator is perfect, you have to believe its creation is perfect. Because love only equals itself. If it sees anything that is greater than itself, it's ad admiration. If it sees itself as anything less, it is pity. And there lies a lot of issues with a lot of relationships between people. You have to find that which is equal. A lot of men might see a woman as less than him. That is not true love, that is pity. If a woman sees her man as someone greater than her, that is admiration. For a relationship to be productive and to be something that is shared, we have to find that in each one of us that equals each other. And that is the substance and the essence of each and every one of us. Every woman can say as much as any man, I am. <laughs> It is in the existence, in the substance that we are there. So spiritually, the spirit was trying to become. It was trying to become and fill every, every aspect of space with itself. So it became itself as spirit. It became itself as soul. So we have a spiritual soul and we have a spirit that is a spirit. But as it approached this density of the physical life, something disrupted it. Now let me give you a famous scripture that I think is so powerful and so misunderstood. It's in Ephesians, the third chapter, and it merely says this, that we were found in God before the foundation of the world. This is what it says. You were found in God before the foundation of the world, and you were found holy and blameless with all spiritual blessings. Now what is original? Not original sin but original blessing. That is what is original, is blessing was first given to us long before we entered into this fall of vibration into something in, 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 in lesser. So our spirit, which is perfectly, where would it end up? In us. And it goes on and says that the word, now get this, the word in, in him before the foundation of the world, if you look up the word foundation in the literal concordant, it says before the disruption of the world, we were found holy and blameless. So there's been a disruption in the fact of the vibration of energy. So we have found that our spirit is inside of our body. Therefore, spiritually, I am not my body. My body is the carrier of my spirit. But energetically, I am my body because all things are energy. Do you, do you, are you with me? 
Let me say it again. The spirit is still becoming, but was disrupted and cut off in the body. Now, how we make a body is interesting. I know that most religions teaches that God creates a little physical body. That isn't true. Two bodies make a body. That simple 101 <laughs> reproduction sex class. <laughs> we all know how babies are made. And even if you're going to come from a biblical Christian background, it's very clear that the, the God of Genesis came along and said, uh, I'll give you the power to multiply. I'm not going to multiply you. I'm going to give you an ability and you're going to multiply yourself. I'll, and th then I'm sure he said, good luck. <laughs> Find the rhythm section of the session. Be prayerful before you make these bodies and start drawing these souls in. Make sure it's in alignment. And I'm afraid we have not done that because we've not understood. We think that every little thing like that is some God separate of us. But it, it is us as God that is using or misusing our power. That's why we need teaching. That's why this morning I'm stepping it up just a little bit today to bring it to an educational level for you because we need teaching to understand this process and therefore why we are to commit to this process to be a part of it. So let me say it again. Energetically, I am my body. Spiritually, I am becoming my body. So we go within and then we start doing the work to help to clear out these disruptions called blockages. That is blocking through our other energy frequency level so that this spirit can become the all in all. You sing it every Sunday. The most powerful line of the Lord's Prayer is let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. You sang that every Sunday. Your prayer is let it be done earth your body is earth. You hold most of the minerals of Mother Earth in your body. That's why we have to have minerals. We don't get enough minerals on our food, so a lot of us take supplements to supplement the minerals we're not getting because our bodies will not thrive without being a part of what Earth is. Walt Whitman says every exaggeration has its effect on the human body. Every exaggeration, every thought that is exaggerated. And what that means is that every thought that you believe is the truth becomes qualified to be a part of the process forming itself. Now please understand, and I'm so in agreement with this, it's also biblical and it's also a course of miracles, that God creates. But there's a difference in what we make and what we form. The first chapter of Genesis said God created man in his likeness and image. The second chapter says, and man be was formed out of the dust of the earth and became a living soul. Do you get that? Creation and form. This is form. This is form. We form. Everything in this room has been formed from an idea. Huh? Every physical body that is here was formed. By two people coming together and bringing their 23 uh, chromosomes of information together to produce a way for your soul to come in to the physical realm. Because this is where the work needs to be done, is in the physical realm. It doesn't need to be done in the spiritual realm. We need to let the spiritual realm come and do the work in our natural realm. There's not a one of us here that would not like to see all the great ideas, affirmations, and all of the wonderful things that we are taught in the principles of unity manifested into our everyday life. We're waiting for the coming of it. We're waiting for the coming of these wonderful principles into our life. Physicist William Teller, Stanford University, feels that if doctors, and I so agree, would treat the energy field as well, they would bring about longer lasting healers. Yes. Yes. Current treatments will be permanent because we have not altered the basic hologram of the mind spiritual levels. So I ask you, when's the last time you went to a medical physician or a caretaker uh, 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 of some kind uh, for your health and they said to you, what's going on in your life? 
What's been going on for the last six months, nine months, or a year of your life? Have you lost a loved one? Have you gone through a separation or a divorce? Have you been depressed? Some very seldom do that. They just begin with the symptom that you bring them, and of course they want to numb it with some kind of medication. I'm not judging that, I'm just telling you the facts. <laughs> That is the answer of the old model uh, of medicine today is, uh, and I'm not totally against all medications whatsoever. They have their place in the scheme of things, but they're not always the answer to everything. And if they understood that, they would maybe treat us differently. According to Debbie Shapiro, which is a book that I have read and and uh, been trained uh, and training people for a long time, over 20 years, and also Dr. Gerber, Richard Gerber, who writes the book uh, Energy Medicine, which is my number one book to suggest to anybody that does any kind of energy or modality work. It's a book that I've, in fact, I've wore the first book out in the first 20 years, and I'm on the, on the second copy of it because I use it so much. He was a medical doctor out of Detroit in the 80s that was a pioneer to step out from the, uh, the model uh, of medicine to bring us some very powerful information. They and others names I could give you of great credentials all agree that illness can appear in the energy field weeks and even months before it appears in the physical body. Six to nine months, Ms. Sapiro says an illness can enter and be in your etheric energy body before it ever manifests in the physical body. This opens us to more preventive work. We do not need to wait until there's a diagnose of some disease if that disease is a result of mispatternings that has ended up in our etheric blueprint. Everything your physical body becomes is in that blueprint. Somebody says, well, I've had the same body for 50 years, 40 years, 60 years, 30 years, however old you are here, but that isn't true. You get a new body every few years. Now, I hear different numbers, but supposedly seven years. Deepak Chopra says you get a new uh, liver every six weeks. I don't know. I can't, I can't tell you about these numbers, but the point is I do know something called mitosis, which that means that every second you're st sitting here, thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of cells are dying and reforming themselves until every seven years you have a completely different body so I'm on my ninth body <laughs> but here's the thing I want to give you about that that's so powerful if it is so and we know it is so that cells replicate themselves correctly they die and they reproduce themselves. Now, the, the Eastern uh, Hindu people, uh, through meditation, understood this. It took us inventing the electron microscope. <laughs> you know, we did it the Western way, through technology. It's always, technology has the last word. It is, it is the God uh, that gives us the final, uh, okay, that this is true. But those who went inside and began to visualize and understand the inner mechanisms of the process of, of physical life and emotional life and the life of the mind began to understand that there was sort of a dance going on between destruction and creation. Creation and destruction. Creation and destruction. They even give them names. They made them the, 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 the lords of the dance. Shakti and Shiva. The lords of the dance. Have you ever seen one? There's the, the statues of Shiva. They are the lords of the dance. One is to destroy. One is to create. One is to destroy. One is create. Oh, yin and yang. But you see, yeah, yin and yang is good too. <laughs> Male, female, negative, positive. So here's the thing. We don't see this. Our brain is so slow, it just takes pictures of the dance and catches us in time. And that's called illusion. Don't think that when something like A Course in Miracles talks about this world as illusion, that they're talking about something that is delusional. <laughs> There's a difference in being delusional and seeing something that's not there and seeing what's there but not understanding what it is and misperceiving it. Are you with me? Come on, we can even get happy on this stuff. Because <laughs> your spirit and mind rejoices because it's ready to move to the next level. 
So as we are constantly cells dying and reproducing, that means there's got to be a place between the creation and the destruction and the recreation called the most sacred point or called a still point. Be still and know. It is a point that where grace does abound. Grace is the place between what is destroyed and what is created. That means before it's recreated, you can do something about it to change its vibration until when it reforms itself, it reforms itself from a different and higher vibration than in the past generation of cells. You can have a whole new generation of cells based upon a higher frequency or vibration. Now, in this community, we are very heart focused. Therefore, the heart has the vi uh, vibration. If you come from your heart more and more and more, what will happen is that will be picked up through your energy system and it will end up affecting how cells create because the next cells will try to match the vibration of the heart and therefore it will raise the vibration to a heart vibration. So, this is important. Dr. Gerber says, and I quote, The etheric body is a holographic energy template that guides the growth and development of the cells that make up the physical body. Hmm. So, why are we not getting the results in many cases that we would like to get? <laughs> Don't you love her? Why? You ever feel like her? <laughs> I realize to some people that this might be concerning to think that actually what I'm getting to is our biography creates our biology. Meaning that the cause of biology is in the choices that we make of the thoughts that we have, the attitudes, the feelings, the perceptions, everything that we do in the invisible will be made visible. So that means that we have to come to a place in which we, if you'll allow me to say, we have to grow up in spirit. The Bible says, grow up in Christ into the fullness of the stature being no more as children being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but grow up in Him in love. Isn't that a great... That was one of the first verses 52 years ago that started my ministry was Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and I'll say it again. Let us grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ, being no more as children, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but growing up in Him in love. Spirituality is a growing experience when it enters into the state of consciousness. It's not that the spirit needs to grow up. It's just that the spirit can only be manifested at the level of consciousness that you give it. So if you raise your consciousness, you're going to see different manifestations of spirit because you've given spirit a consciousness in which to extend itself as manifestation. All growing up means... All it means when we talk about being co-creative is the R word that so many people shy away from, which is responsibility. But you know everybody's afraid of responsibility because they think they just can't do it. I just don't have it in me to be responsible for all my thoughts and my, my choices and my food choices and this choices. And I understand that. I'm not either. As this entity you're looking at, I am not. But thank goodness we've been given a helper. <laughs> we've been given somebody that said, if you will call on me with the willingness of your heart, I will come and I will guide you and lead you and teach you and I'll be that part of you that you think's missing. Called the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit is the biggest buddy I've ever had for 52 years of this journey of ministry. I've seen people come and go. I've seen preachers come and go. I've seen all these things come and go. But I always relied on my good buddy, the Holy Spirit, to be there, to be that part that I needed when I did not have faith. Sometimes my faith was challenged beyond anything you could imagine. But you know, I'm going to give you another wonderful scripture that helped me. And it says this. When we deny God, God remaineth faithful. I said, oh, thank you, God. It does not depend on the times that I'm believing or not believing. It's your faith in me. It, when my faith in you wavers... I draw upon the faith that you have in your children and in your creation inside of us. I think that is so secure to me in the times of ups and downs. We have wonderful principles here at Unity, but we want to manifest them. So if you're sitting here listening to this and thinking, oh boy, this means some work on my part. <laughs> And I just fear I cannot do it. Don't you let fear come up right now. And I'm going to give you a quote by R Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. If you fear something, that's what you need to go for. Go right into it and find out it is the illusion that it is. That it is not real. Of course, the miracles, as you know, teaches us you cannot have two opposites existing in the same space that are, uh, that are both real. One is real, one is not real. So if you're going to believe love is real, you've got to believe fear is not real. Just as you cannot believe that darkness is real. Now it's going to look dark if we came back here at 10 o'clock tonight, Right? But if darkness was real, then it would stand up as real in the presence of light. Try to bring darkness into the presence of light. Impossible. The minute you bring darkness into the presence of light, the darkness is gone because it never existed. It was only an absence. Even nighttime is just an absence of the sun shining on this side, side, uh, side of the earth. Oh, but the earth... Uh, the sun rises in the west and it sits and uh, rises in the east. <laughs> Dyslexic. Uh, <laughs> rises in the east and sits in the west. Wrong. It doesn't do anything. It just sits in the middle of the universe and we revolve around it, giving the illusion it's moving. Isn't that a great example of an illusion? The sun is crossing the sky. No, the earth is turning. Uh, and in that 24 hour period, it makes the illusion that the sun is rising and setting. So please be not afraid to move into these places. It is so tremendously important. I wanted to just read something to you out of this book that I have taught so much. If you'll bear with me, what's not long. We begin to understand that what happens to us physically is something over which we have, do have control. That's the first thing, is you've got to realize that you do have the control which has been given to you by Creator. It's not the egoic control over something. It is the control to be a part of it and to control the, uh, the outcome of it by your free will intention to direct it in the way you want it. So we have control. We are not a victim of or suffer because of circumstances just beyond ourselves. Now, I want to say in that statement that I, I try to be fair with that because I think there's things that can happen to us that is out of the collective consciousness of the planet. In other words, if enough people uh, uh, buy into a certain belief, you can be affected by that. And at that level, you could say there is such thing as a victim. But from the victim of truth and spirit, there are no victims. 
So I, I talk like this. I don't talk like this. It's not black and white or this and that. I think that many things uh, that sound contradictory absolutely exist at the same time. So it's kind of what level that you're basically on. But to you who are sitting here in this congregation who have been taught these principles where much has been given you, much is required of you. You know things. You understand principles of spirit. You understand how the power of thought is. You've had a lot of teaching, read, read a lot of books, and I want you to know we have a responsibility to rise to the level of this information and this knowledge that we have. It says the concept of the body-mind is based on the belief in the unity and integrity of each human being that, th that uh, through, uh, although there are many different aspects that make up the whole person. The body-mind matrix reflects psychological and somatic, that's the Greek word for body, harmony. The body is simply a gross manifestation of the subtlety of the mind. Of the mind. So it is important. What is your biography? Is your biography include peace that passes understanding? This is the first lesson that one has to learn that peace or love or joy or any of these fruits of the Spirit do not depend upon conditions. It's easy to have peace when everything is going the way you believe it should be going in your life. <laughs> it's easy to believe in prosperity when you get that check in the mail you did not expect. It is easy when things are going a certain way based upon condition. But what I'm talking about is unconditional. We have to learn to be in this world. As difficult of a challenge it is to be in the kind of world we live in today, which is made out of the thoughts, we, we see the biology, the world, based upon the biography of a lot of thinking that has come together to form the world we live in. And the only thing that, that made it is the thing that's going to change it. And that is a shift. A shift in thought, a shift in attitude, a shift in also our vision. So it begins with oneself. You are the garden that God has given you. If you take care of your garden, then you can move to the next level and we can begin to affect the whole earth. So take care of your, our own selves. Let us be aware that these wonderful things that have been given to us are basically based upon our inner environment, our biography. It will become. It will become. I had the greatest challenge last year, as many of you know, when they discovered um, a tumor on my right lung. It was cancer. And I thought, why my, why my lung? You know, I just got really pissed off with God. <laughs> How dare you? For 52 years I've used these lungs to minister and teach and preach and try to give people your word and all this and another. Because the first reaction was to play the victim. Poor me. But as I've studied this and I've read such books as, as this and others that tell me that the lungs represent the first breath that you take after you're born. That's when you become a living soul, is when you take that first breath. Well, I was a 10-month baby because, um, and I won't go into all my stuff I've done, but I've done regression and I've done a few things. And I'm telling you, I wasn't just excited about this lifetime. <laughs> I thought, this is some pretty tough assignments I've signed up for this time. I understood my script and I understood how it was going to go. It was going to go pretty bizarre. It's going to be controversial in my life, uh, in my beliefs, in my thinking. I knew I wasn't going to fit into the status quo. I knew that it was going to be very, uh, very much of a challenge. So I just stayed in the womb as long as I could. <laughs> so I have through this an understanding that what I need to heal in myself is make peace with being here. Making peace with the life I have lived, the choices I have made, the experience that I've had both good and not so good. And realize that everything has an opportunity to teach me something. 
That was the message I got from this. So as each and every one of you have a particular challenge in a certain part of your body, if you'd like some time, we can go into that and find out why do you have it there? Why is it your kidneys? Why is it your spleen? Why is it your heart? Why is it your spine? Why is it there? All of that had to do with your biography at some point that ended up being your biology. So rather than run and try to get it fixed and, and whatever, we need to go in and to the root. We need to go in and change the causes of our life. That doesn't mean that we right or wrong, good or bad. It's not a thing of judgment. It's just the way it has been. I'm sure we've most of us done the best we know to do. But sometimes we haven't known the more excellent way. And there is a more excellent way in which you can be a part of how you make and form your world mentally, emotionally, psychologically. A way that you can drive how your cells themselves replicate themselves to become more healthier, younger looking cells. Yes, I believe in anti-aging. I don't think it's in a cream. <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind slapping on some green once in a while, but I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is to change my biography. People say to me, oh, you're new age. I say, oh, no, I'm no age. I'm not new age. I'm not old age. I'm no age. I'm an eternal created being living out the human experience here to raise the human experience to a new level. You must feel this in you as I close now feel the importance of being alive at this time and being able to step up and become those who will help humanity to evolve to the next level to what it means to be human I don't tell this often because I know it's something to be skeptical of I was too still am but it happened but I had an experience. Just a, I've got two minutes. Um, sorry, I'm saying that because I, I want to quit in two minutes. <laughs> uh, I had an experience some years ago. I, I'm not, I can't tell you I have way out woo-woo experiences all the time. I don't. I've pretty much had to walk this thing by faith. But boy, the ones I've had have been life-changing. And I was in a place where I had an experience in which I was given an ability to view behind the veil into the most holy place what the new human will look like. And I was taken behind this, this veil and it was said to me, now I didn't hear a voice per se, but you know what I mean. I, I got it in my spirit. I'm interpreting the, the feeling. Uh, you cannot take back with you all that you've seen but one thing that will allow you to take one thing back that you may share with people as you feel to do it. And the thing that I remembered that I brought back was where blood ran in the veins, light ran in the veins. And at that moment, I, and then I started hearing the last few years ago about the, the Merkabah, the, the, the light body. And I went, oh my goodness. We have this light that is getting ready to outray our physical bodies and we're going to wear as it is garments of light. That's what happened to Jesus, it says, when he went to the high mountain. It took Peter, James, and John. He took faith. He took love. He took the right, the right elements with him. And because of that, it said that the light came out of him and he glistened. He glistened on the outside of himself as golden light. At that moment, Jesus Christ became Christ Jesus. I hope you got some of this this morning. I, I was, you know, back, but I, I, want you to, I, want, I want to push you a little bit. I want to push the envelope a, a little bit to let you feel. Get a copy of this. Re-listen to it. Uh, if I could just take a moment. Uh, Wednesday is uh, our first Wednesday of the month in which we have a spiritual meeting here at 1030 instead of the School of Spirituality. If you are available, you are please invited to come. So let's say together our prosperity blessing. I share because I care. I give because I can. 
Uh, joy, give, be a blessing to this community. All right, give and give unto the Lord. All right. Have a wonderful week.